So we're going to talk about printing in the second half of the lecture. Now, I know that I didn't show any actual InDesign in the first half of the lecture. Um, I will demo the first project uh, step by step so that you can follow along with that um, at the end of the, the formal slideshow lecture. So keep that in mind. In the first half, you, you could have been opening up InDesign. You could have been playing along, um, practicing along. You can use the, the recommended textbook for that as well. Um, but don't worry if you're not 100% confident with your ability to do those things. I will demo it step by step um, at the very end of the entire lecture. So when you're ready to print a project, there's basically two options for you to print. You can choose file print or you can choose file print booklet. And the differences are printing one sheet or printing it as sheets of paper or printing as something that will fold to form a booklet. I think that's pretty self-explanatory um, in the terms. but but how you set up your files or, no, that's a lie. How you set up your settings to print your files is, is quite different depending on the two outputs. And so I'm going to go through both dialog boxes. You're required to print your projects in ART 1200, specifically for project one or assignment one. And I can't remember the number of the project, but when you do your newsletter project, you will also need to use the print booklet option. For everything else, we're going to use sheets of paper. We're going to use one page projects or we're going to do projects that have multiple pages but you want to print them as sheets anyway. And so if you want to print traditionally the way you would print from any other kind of software uh, program or Microsoft Word, etc., you'll choose file print and you'll go to print dialog box. And we're going to start at the top of the dialog box and we're going to go through some of the settings that you would want to choose. When you look at the print dialog box, the top portion has three options. And so the print presets, we don't do presets in ART 1200. That's something you can learn in the advanced InDesign class. So we'll jump right to where it says printer. And so you want to hit the drop down menu and you want to choose the printer that you want to print to. In this case, it has SCC N18, N181, HPC LJ6015. Uh, we renumbered the, the classrooms, but SCC was South City Campus, in room N for the North Hallway 181, and it's an HP Color Laser Jet 6015. Um, you would choose whatever printer you're printing from. The next setting that you're concerned about is the general tab. So I'm going to call these things on the left tabs, and we're just going to work our way from the top to the bottom of these tabs. And there are a few tabs we're concerned about, and others we really don't care much about at this point. And so under the general tab, you want to always choose the number of copies you want to print. Under the pages, you want to make sure you choose the right page range. And so if you're printing a booklet, you want to print all eight pages of the booklet. Um, I'm going to have you print color separations. And for the color separations, you have to print any one page. So pick the page you want to print, page one, page seven, page eight, page four. But you do not want to print all the pages. So you would change this page range. And then you would highlight where it says one to eight. And you would type a number six if you want to print 6. If you want to print pages 6 and 7, you could put 6-7. If you want to print pages 1, 4, and 9, then you could put 1, 4, 9, and you can change the range there. At the bottom, you have the option to print blank pages, and that is important when you're printing a booklet. Um, if you're printing a booklet and you have designed it so that some of the pages are blank, you need to select to print the blank pages, or else the booklet will not print right because the imposition will skip those pages and it gets kind of frustrating. Also, if you're printing, pretend you're writing like a paper for, in Microsoft Word and you want to print just pages that are sheets and then when you're done you staple them. That's not really booklet printing, it's just kind of printing. Um, if for some reason you design blank pages in that as part of that, you want to make sure you include those as well or else after you print and it's already collated, you have to go back and kind of insert those blank sheets because InDesign will skip it thinking, well, you're asking to print, there's no printing on that page, so you must not want me to print it. The second tab down is the setup tab, and this is where you can choose your paper size, and we will only be using two sizes of paper in this class, either US letter, which is eight and a half by 11, or tabloid, which is 11 by 17. Some printers will say eight and a half by 11, or 11 inches by 17 inches. Uh, other printers will say U.S. letter or tabloid. So you need to know for R1200 that U.S. letter is 8.5 by 11 inches and tabloid is 11 inches by 17 inches. You can also change the orientation of how your image hits the paper. And there's a, there's a visual in the bottom left-hand corner of the print dialog box 
that shows you the paper size, which is the big white one here, it's eight and a half by 11, and your page size. So in InDesign, whatever project I'm trying to print right now, it is smaller than eight and a half by 11, and by default, it's gonna print in the top left-hand corner. I can rotate the orientation to be portrait or landscape. I can even flip it upside down and I can rotate it, you know, 90 degrees at a time until I get the orientation that I want for my project. This is especially important when you're printing a booklet, but we'll get there when we get there. The bottom half of the panel allows you to scale your project and for our class, I want you to do this every single time you print. I want you to hit scale to fit and if it tells you that it was going to scale it higher than 100%, meaning that it's going to blow it up to fit the page, I want you to go back to width and height and make them 100%. If you choose scale to fit, and it tells you it has to print 86% in order to get it to all fit on the page, I would like you to always scale to fit. We're going to print things with all printer's marks, which are things that fall off the side of your page that show you where to trim. They have page information and things like that that we'll learn about. Um, and sometimes our page size in InDesign is too big to allow those things to actually print on the paper. And so if you need to scale to fit to show those things, I want you to always do that in Art 1200. So again, write this down. Scale to fit, and if it tells you that it's above 100%, meaning it will blow it up, I do not want you to blow up your project. I want you to change it back to width and height 100%. If you scale to fit and it's less than 100%, if it's 99%, 94%, 86%, 50%, I want you to scale it to fit. And last but not least, I would like the page position not to be the upper left-hand corner. I would like you to always center your projects. And the benefit of hitting scale to fit is it will always center on the page automatically for you, so you don't have to choose that drop-down. Now, if you wanted to, you could create thumbnails of your pages or you could tile your page. Maybe you wanted to print something that is 24 inches by 36 inches, but you only have 8.5 by 11 sheets. You could use that tile option to print a bunch of 8.5 by 11s that you could like tape back together. Um, you are not required to do that for our class, though. Um, not to go on too much of a tangent, but the reason you're not required to do that is because we have wide format printers here at the South City campus, and I would rather you print a big poster that's 24 by 36 than to tape a bunch of individual pieces together. Okay, the next tab down is the Marks and Bleeds tab, and I would like you to include all printer's marks when that is noted in your assignment requirements, and do not include it when it's not noted. Um, all printer's marks include crop marks, bleed marks, registration marks, color bars, and page information. These are the things that you see in the visual example here that you can't really make out because they're too small, but they're all around the outside of the page, and they help you in printing. They help you, they tell you where to trim. The crop marks tell you where to trim. Sometimes they're called trim marks, so if I asked you on a quiz um, to tell me what they are called, I would accept trim marks or crop marks as the answer. The bleed marks indicate where your bleed is, which we haven't learned about yet, so don't worry about that. Registration marks allow you to make, uh, to align printing plates when printing. And so we're probably just going to print in color in here, but if we were printing on a printing press, like you'll learn if you take Art 1135 Printing Fundamentals, um, you have to print one color at a time. And so maybe you're printing blue and black. So you print blue, and then after the sheets are done, you put it back through the printing press, and you print black. Um, you need to make sure that these colors line up perfectly, and when they are lined up, it's called registration. You're registering one color to another. The registration marks allow you to align the colors when you're printing on a printing press. Color bars are used in printing to measure the density of the color being applied on the sheet. And in printing, we don't look at something and say, well, that looks right, we printed it right. What we do is we measure the density of the ink being applied and we compare it to the density that it's supposed to be applied. And so if you're supposed to have 70% dense yellow on a page and you measure the color bar and it's 70% dense yellow, then you can say, I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. If you measure it and you're only getting 50% yellow, something is not right between your file and your output. And so then you can try to troubleshoot that. And then the last thing is page information. And page information will include your file name and the date and time in which you print your project. Um, in addition, if you print color separations, which takes your color image and it divides it into channels of color for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which we will talk about later in the slideshow, it will tell you which color separation represents which color. And so one page of your project will be broken out into at least four different pages, one for cyan, one for magenta, one for yellow, and one for black. And if you don't know which is which, they're all, in, they're all in black and white, they're not in color. And so you're looking at black and white images, 
the page information will tell you. One will say cyan process, one will say magenta process, etc. Last but not least, under the Marks and Bleeds tab, I want you to always use the document bleed setting. Always leave that selected. Notice how when you use that selected that the top, bottom, inside, outside is grayed out. The document that I was using when I created this screenshot had a standard printing bleed of 0.125 inches. Write that down. That's a standard and you need to know it for our class. Um, that's standard and I added that to my document and so I want whenever I output I want to print and I want to include that bleed area. Now you don't know what a bleed is yet but you will but standard is 0.125 inches. The output tab is the last tab that we are concerned with right now. Uh, there are other options that you should be concerned with, but for right now, that's the only one we're concerned with. Under the output tab, you want to choose the color that you're printing, and there's a drop down illustrated over here where composite leave unchanged, composite gray, composite RGB, composite CMYK separations, and in rip separations. Composite means blend, so we're blending these colors together. So if you want a color image, you're going to use composite CMYK for printing. If you are printing to a photo printer, it defaults to having RGB color mode, so you can choose RGB. If you wanted to print a grayscale version of your project, you can print a grayscale version. We are only going to use two options in our class. We are going to use composite CMYK and separations. We are not going to use in-rip separations. Composite CMYK prints a color image, so if I wanted a color copy, I might describe it as being color copy, a CMYK copy, or a composite CMYK copy. Um, they are all describing the same thing. It's a printed output and it's CMYK, and so for us it's composite CMYK. In addition, I may ask you to print color separations where it takes your color image and it breaks it down into channels of color representing the cyan, the magenta, the yellow, and the black in the image, and you get one page for each one of those colors. And so you'll get one page that's all grayscale, but it represents where the cyan would go, and one page is all magenta. Uh, it's all grayscale, but it represents where the magenta will go. There's one for yellow and there's one for black. When you're going to print those, you're going to choose separations. Now, this is where most students get hung up on project one or assignment number one. Most home printers cannot print color separations, and so you either need to come to campus to print your project, which is what I'd recommend because it's the easiest and it will just work and it will be super fast, or you need to take your files to a Kinko's type place that has a PostScript printer, or if you're familiar what PostScript files are and you're able to create PostScript files, you can submit PostScript files for your output but you should be printing. The primary goal of the project is to print your color copy and to print your postscript, um, your color separations. You should only be using postscript files if you already know how to use them. I'm not specifically going to show you because I don't actually want you to make postscript files. I want you to print. But if you're having trouble printing and you have the ability to make postscript files and you already know how to make them, you could um, create postscript color separations instead of printing them if your home printer will not allow for it. The last thing that we're concerned about under the output are the colors that you're printing. And so you can see that right now your project would print cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and it would print beige. This is a spot color, and so if I sent this to a commercial printer, the printer would have to have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink, plus it'd have to buy this beige ink. If I printed this at home or uh, on campus and I don't have a printer that has spot colors, it would just convert that to BCMYK and so I would get a CMYK version of that beige color. The inks also allow you to decide if your color separations are going to print. So when you change this drop down here to separations, this inks panel will activate and there's a little printer icon. And so you can turn off the printer icon on the color separations you don't want to print. One of the requirements for the first assignment is to print color separations, so you'll have a cyan, a magenta, a yellow, a black, and a spot beige color that will output for your color separation. And then after you've printed them, you need to identify which one is the magenta color separation. And physically on the color separation, I would like you to, to explain or to identify what the printer's marks are that we talked about back here. Right There are five sets of printer's marks. I want you to identify them on the, the magenta color separation. If you were to mess up for some reason and you wrote them on the cyan one for by accident or you did them wrong on the magenta one, 
you don't have to print five sheets of paper over again. You can change the color drop down and be separation. And then you can turn off the printer on all of them except for cyan and just reprint the cyan one. Or all of them off except for the magenta one and just reprint the magenta one. You don't have to print five at a time if you don't want to. And that's illustrated over here in my other example on the side here. If I was to hit print right now and I was printing color separations, I would get a cyan, a magenta, and a spot beige separation, but I would not be printing a yellow or a black one.